Hello all, this is the step-by-step -step setup of Oracle 19C2 node rack. This particular setup is done on Reddit Enterprise Linux 7.8 and VirtualBox 6.1.30. This particular tutorial is divided into multiple parts, single video, multiple parts, and we will be covering all of this into this particular video. We will cover the overview, how to install the Reddit Enterprise Linux, how to clone the nodes, set the shared disk, install the grid home or the clusterware, create the cluster, install the database home, and finally create the database. The amount of steps that I'll be performing are watched. It's going to take a lot of time. The time in my watch is close to 1 p.m. By the time this setup completes, it will be almost 4 p.m. or more than 4 p.m. So it's going to take me a long time. However, this particular video will not be three hours long because I'll pause wherever uh, the setup is running in the background. I do not want to waste your time watching the screen. So I will pause and resume when once the setup is completed. The what I'll do first is I will go through, the, through this document first. Once I've explained the document, then we are going to go to the actual lab. As I mentioned, everything will be done in front of you guys. Everything that is needed to set up the cluster, everything will be done in front of you guys. So once you once you see this video, once you follow the document or once you follow the tutorial, you will be able to set the cluster as I have done it and it should work fine. The first I will explain the overview what we need to do. So we will be building a virtual machine using Reddit Enterprise Linux 7.8. Allocate at least 8 GB of RAM per node. Allocate at least 10 GB of swap to avoid the swap warnings. Networking in such a way that we have one private IP for interconnect and ASM, one public IP per node. Make sure to have IP come online automatically. I will explain what that means when we reach to that particular stage. Set up ETC host. I will show you how the ETC host looks like. Disable firewall in your production environment. You should set the ports rather than disabling the firewall. This is the this is my personal lab, so this should be fine. Set up the NTP crony. Uh, for that, I need the third adapter. I have only two IPs. However, I will configure the third IP because my NTP, my this IPs will not be able to communicate to the internet or NTP server in your production environment. If this one of these IPs are able to communicate to the NTP server, you do not need the third adapter. However, in my case, the third adapter is needed. But in reality, the Oracle ASM only needs two IPs, one private IP, one public IP. This is the IP that I need in my lab to have the NTP cloning. Once this the IP configuration is done, we are going to create the necessary users, Oracle and Grid. We are going to set the SSH between the Oracle user or let Oracle do it. We are going to set the SSH between the Grid user or let Oracle do it. So we can we can set up the SSH manually or we can let Oracle do it and let's let Oracle do it because it will do it faster. The necessary object directories, we are going to create the necessary directories for the Grid home and Oracle home. This is very important package. We are going to install this particular package. This is called pre-install package. And this particular package sets the kernel parameters, lot of kernel parameters. So instead of me setting the kernel parameters manually, let Oracle do it. If Oracle does it, then it will do, do it right. So we will let Oracle do it. Install Oracle ASM lib, install Oracle ASM support. Once all of this is done, we are ready to clone the machines. Once we close the machine, I'm going to set the shared storage in such a way that 20 GB for ASM data, 4 GB for OCR. Then from the shared storage, we are going to create the ASM disk. Then we are going to uh, unzip the grid software on node 1, unzip the database software on node 1, install the cluster verification utility uh, RPM. We are going to optionally, we will verify that our cluster, the nodes are all good. Then we are going to run the grid setup as a grid user to create the cluster. We are going to run the run installer as Oracle user to install the database home. We are going to set the SMD for the data. And then we are going to run the DBCA as Oracle user to create the database. So these are all the steps that we are going to do. The most important is this. This is the most lengthy step. Once we have done this, then rest all should be fine. So what I will do is, as I mentioned, I will walk through the document. So IP configuration for reference. The, these are the IP these are the IPs that I'll be using in my environment. So anything ends with one is for node one. Anything ends with two is for the node two. The IPs are set up in such a way that you can see the virtual IP, the scan IP, and public IP. They need to be in the same subnet because they are external facing. The, they, and hence they should be in the the uh, public IP subnet. And the IP, if you can see, I've already explained the IP ending with one. 
R for node 1, the IP ending with node 2, R for node 2. The 192.168.0 is the private subnet, 192.168.1 is the public subnet. So that's how the IP configuration looks like. The installation of rail, rail 7.8, the amount of steps that are involved in installation of the rail 7.8, I have covered, I have created a separate document and I will explain that particular document once I cover this particular document. So first I will skip this particular part two and once I've explained the part two, once I have explained the, this particular document, I'll move to the next document. So what we are going to do is once the OS is installed, we are going to clone the nodes from the base image. The When we clone the nodes, everything for the first node will be set up in such a way that we do not have to perform any changes in the node one. Only thing that we have to do is we have to do the changes in the node two. So we will change the MAC address. We will set the host name. We will change the IP address of the second node and then we will also change the host name using hostname CTL. No changes are required to the first node. So I mentioned that. Once that is done, now we have two nodes ready. We are going to set up the shared storage. So to set up the shared storage, what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to set up the 20 GB as ASM disk, 4 GB for OCR. Make sure this kind of type fixed. What does this fixed means? You will come to know when I when we reach to that particular section. Once the disks are shared, then we are going to format the disks uh, using the fdisk command. We are going to format the disk and then we are going to create the as <coughs> sorry create the ASM disk from the DB1, create the OCR disk from DC uh, DC1, and then we are going to scan the disk and we are going to list the disk. This is the path of the ASM disk which we'll use when we set up the cluster. The next part is now that we have got our shared disk, we are going to untar the unzip the grid grid home and we are going to install the cvu disk when i install i will be setting the dba group i'll explain why this is done and then as a grid user as a grid user will be running the grid setup.sh for some reason my grid setup.sh doesn't add an entry in etc or type so we will manually add the entry in etc or type on both the nodes once the grid is installed we are ready to install the database home so we will as an oracle user we will unzip the oracle home and then we are going to run the run installer to install the oracle home finally we are we are all through we are going to now create a separate disk for the data disk using the create disk group command we might have to change the compatibility we might have to change the compatibility for this particular disk so we will do that and finally we will run the dbca to create the database so a lot of steps that i'm going to cover in this particular tutorial so stay with me and let's start our journey on oracle asm the time in my watch is close to 1 14 pm so it's easily going to take me close to 4 pm based on how my speed is how fast i'm able to explain and how fast my laptop performs my laptop is not so powerful so it's going to take me a long time so what i'll do is what i did skip is the part two that i skipped so I'll explain what we need to do to install rail 78. So this is the part two. And here I have explained, we are going to open the virtual box. In the virtual box, we are going to say new virtual ma machine of type rail. I'm choosing, you can give any name of your choice. I'm choosing rail 708 gold image because this will be the base image. We are going to set up the two networks, internal network and bridge network. Internal network will become the private IP. Bridge network will become the public IP. The base memory, 8 GB at least 8 GB per machine, configure two processors per machine. If more the memory better, more the processors better. My machine doesn't have more processors. I can only give two processors. I have, it's the four processor, four core processor machine. So I can only give two processors. Insert the rail 7.8, start the machine, press I to install the rail 7.8, reboot, install the guest additions, eject the guest additions, shut down the machine, enable the clipboard, enable the shared folder. Remember that you cannot enable the clipboard and shared folder unless until the guest additions are not installed. So you have to perform this step only after you have in installed the guest additions because the functionality of clipboard and shared folder depends on the guest additions. So this is this uh, the press I and reboot. There are a lot many things here. Uh, the installation that will be, I will show you. I will not explain you. I will show you when I do the installation. The, these are the commands that we will be running. Once all the steps are done, we are going to boot the machine and below are the command that has to be run as root unless specified. So we will change the host name to db.db1.com. So, and then we are going to reboot the machine. 
we are going to configure the ips i have already explained 0 0.101 is the private ip 1.101 .101 is the public ip this is how the etc host file looks like so this is public ip this is the private ip this is the virtual ip and this is the scan ip the ipv6 is not mandatory so it's not mandatory to disable it however in my environment i'm not using the ipv6 so i'll be disabling by adding these lines in the in the ip in the it syscontrol.con file i'll add this line and then we will disable the ipv6 this is optional this is not mandatory as i already mentioned the firewall is not in my environment i'm just going to disable the firewall however in your production environment it's not advisable to disable the firewall what you should be doing is setting up the rules the ports for the oracle next once we have done all of this we are going to create the users if you see i'm not going to create the user called o install uh, the user that I'm using is the DBA, the Oracle user, the DBA is the user, Oracle user and the grid user will be part of the DBA group and I will set the, the rule in such a way for the DBA group, the sudo rule in such a way that Oracle user and the grid user can run any sudo command without password. So that's what I'm doing here. Again, I'm mentioning I'm not using the group called O install. So you can see that I'm using the single group called DBA. If you want, you can use the O install. It's not mandatory to use the O install. You can, you can, you can create any group. I'm choosing DBA. It's not mandatory. It's not mandatory to have the Oracle user as the Oracle home. Uh, it's not mandatory to have grid user. It's, it's your environment. You can customize it based on whatever user IDs that you want to set up. However, that's why I'm not using the O install. The some of the packages are required so we most of the packages we will install as part of the red hat installation however some packages it will not install so we'll create the local repo from the we will mount the we will make the mount point we will mount the cd drive then we are going to create the local repo and then we we once we create the local repo we are going to do the yam update and we are going to install some of the packages that are not get, not got installed as Part of the installation we will install them manually how to do that you can just you can you'll see me doing this so i'll mount the disk then i will copy the media repo into the yum it is report db then i will change the permissions i will edit the file to have these particular lines and then i'm going to do the yum update the, finally we are going to install the necessary packages these packages are required for us to install the database pre-install if we do not install these packages the database pre-install package will not be installed so these are important the the x term is if you are using the x launch if you are using the x ming then you need the x term to verify that your this is working however this particular package is not mandatory this is an optional package the oracle database pre-install that's downloaded from the if this is the link this this particular package is downloaded the pre-install using the curl this particular package is downloaded using this so you can just copy paste this command the next part is the installation of the lib std for some reason i could not find this in the reddit media so what i did is i actually went to so i'll show you that so i actually went to here so if you go here under this you i'm using 7.8 so let's go to 7.8 and under this if you search for this particular package you should be able to find that particular package so if i do this you you see so that particular package or you can directly go to this particular link i've given that particular link as well so this is the package which i could not find in reddit package and this particular package i got it from the curl from the uh, actual website once this is done you will be able to see that it has set most of the kernel parameters so we are going to verify the pre-install and then for some some packages it will not install so we will some kernel parameters it will not set very few then we will add them manually in etc security limits.conf once all of that is done we are going to install the oracle assembly again i i will mention from where i have downloaded this these are the packages that got downloaded from oracle if you can see that these are the packages for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. I'm using 7.8. So these are the two packages that I'll be installing. These are the two packages, EL7, EL7, as you can see, EL7, Enterprise Linux 7, Enterprise Linux 7. These are the two packages that I'll be installing for the, for the ASM. Once the Oracle packages are installed, again, one thing is like for this particular packages to work, the K mode Oracle ASM needs to be there. 
if this particular package is not installed the oracle asm lib will not get installed so this is a mandatory package that we need to install for the oracle asm lib to work once the asm is installed we are going to configure the oracle asm using the oracle asm configure i we are going to configure it then we are going to enable the oracle asm service for it to start automatically at this moment the the now we are going to create the directories if you see the directory structure that i'm using i'm not using the u01 as i mentioned everything is customizable there is no hard and fast rule that you have to follow oracle naming convention you can use any of the naming convention my naming convention is pretty simple i like to keep my things simple so this is the database base this is the database home this is the grid base this is the grid home the the grid base the permissions this will be done by root as i mentioned before so we will change the permission to 777 we will change the owner of database and database base to oracle dba we will change the permission of grid base and grid home to grid dba and we will verify that all of that is done the ntp services we are we need to set the ntp services for that we need the third adapter i have already marked it if we do not need the third adapter we only need it for ntp service because my two adapters doesn't need have the doesn't have the internet connectivity so we will have the third uh, adapter the once all of this is done our base machine is done we will shut down the machine and we will we can clone optionally uh we will set we will add these particular parameters in our bash rc and oracle in our grid rc we will add these particular parameters so our life becomes simple we can run the dbca or we can run the sql plus commands without setting the or env environment so this is optional that's why i have mentioned it optional it's not mandatory however i will do it so at this moment our cluster our base image is set up this was the part two the base image was done and then we are ready to do the clone so i've explained a lot of things we have i've explained a lot of things so let's start our journey and we will connect so first thing that we need to do is launch the virtual box so first thing that we need to do is install the os so i'll follow the second box open virtual box as i've done create a new virtual machine of type rail 708 will be the machine name so machine new i'm clicking i'm clicking machine new give the name you see it says windows 7 so if i say rail 708 gold it automatically changed to rail type red hat type this is very important click on next you at least 8 gb it's you can run it on 6 gb however it will struggle so 8 gb is preferable so give at least 8 gb click on next create a virtual disk now yes click create then dynamically allocated yes you 120 gb again you don't need to have 120 gb disk this is the this particular disk is only uh it's it's a dynamically allocated which means that only when it starts filling up it will use it hardly hardly some 20 gb will be used by oracle home database home and the entire os so you don't need 120 gb disk however i'm just giving it because i'll be creating the swap and everything in the same day so create the disk so we are ready to create the disk that's done now let's go to setting the adapters two adapters internal network and bridged so let's go to the network part adapter change it from the net to internal network this will be your private ip enable the second adapter that that will be your bridge adapter third adapter we will enable at a later point in time so i'll leave that at, at this moment the the we will click on system processes we need two processes as i mentioned the 8192 8gb i have already configured two processors i have configured two processors so that's done click on ok once that is done we are going to insert the rail 7.8 disk so now let's verify all the settings so system there are two processors good motherboard 8192 that's good network that is a internal network that's good there is a bridge adapter that's good the the system we don't need a floppy disk so we can uncheck this rest all i'm leaving as it is so only thing that i changed is the motherboard processor and the network these are the only thing that i have changed as of now now let's click on the settings once again go to the storage menu click on this disk click on this round disk click on choose a disk file so you will navigate to the os so the os that we are going to install is rail 7.8 so this is the os that i am using for this so choose that particular disk and say okay so that's all done we have we have successfully uh created the bare bone now let's start the machine and it's going to go in the boot much boot mode so it's going to we are once we start the machine 
it will read the disk and then we have to press the i button to install the red hat 7.8 and once we have installed we are going to reboot there are a lot of the things that i'll be doing so stay with me so here we are and now i have to press i so i'll click on this capture and then i'll say i i'm saying i and then enter so right now it's it's reading the disk and it's going to give me the gui where i can set the software selection i can set the root user i can set the the location where the disk uh, location etc etc so give it a minute let's let the system boot to the gui menu yeah so i we reached to this particular section so language english we are good so we'll choose you choose your language continue date and time so first thing that i'm going to do is date and time i'm in india so i'm going to say india done this software selection we are going to choose server with gui then we are going to choose the back packages backup server we do not need it dns name server we do not need it email server we do not need it ftp server we do not need it file and storage storage server we do not need it for this but we are going to install it hardman monitoring utilities i'll choose yes identity manager so only two packages as of now file and storage server hardware monitoring utilities identity manager server no infinity band server no java platform no kde no last system performance i'll choose yes load balancer no mainframe access no mariadb no network file nfs yes performance tools yes these are the only thing that i'm choosing so if you see five packages file and storage server hardware monitoring utilities last system performance network nfs and performance tools these are the only packages that i chose from the top section here i need to choose compatibility libraries definitely yes development tools definitely yes and system admission tool definitely yes so these are the packages i'll repeat what i chose so that you you know so file and storage server one hardware monitoring tool two large system performance three network file system four performance tools five from the bottom compatibility libraries development tools and system administration tools so these are the three things that i chose from here so that's done the next part that we are going to do is the we are going to disable the kdump so we don't need the this is the security policy so we are we don't need the security policy kdump also i am not going to use it in your production environment you should leave the kdump on however this is the pro, this is my lab so i'm going to disable it the the network and host name i'm not going to set it now Le i will do it at a later point in time so i'll show you how to set it up at a later point in time so i'm going to not set it up at this moment and installation partition so instead of saying automatically configure partition i will say i will configure partition then i will click on done and then here instead of lvm i will say standard partition you can use lvm there is no harm of not using lvm you can use lvm however i'm using and a standard partition and then i'll click here to create them automatically so it gets created all of these file system are xfs you can leave them as xfs however i'm comfortable with ext4 file system so i will choose ext4 for all the file systems so i'm changing this to ext4 so that's that's done swap can remain as it is so i'll verify this is the ext4 this is ext4 this is ext4 and the what i'll do is i don't need home to be 60 gb so what i'll do i will reduce this to maybe 40 20 is also fine uh, but okay uh instead of 48 what i'll do i'll make it 20 we don't need a big home so i'll change it to 20 gb the the swap i said at least 10 gb so i'll say 10 gib 10 gb so and whatever is remaining so there is 39 gb so what i'll do i will make it 100 gib however it will not turn to 100 gb it will turn to 89 gb because there is only 39 gb left so i'll say 100 gb but automatically it will choose it to be 89 gb so you can see it chose 89 gb so that's all done so the 20 gb for home 89 gb for root uh 10 gb i am not creating the separate mount points for the oracle home and grid home i will install i what i'll do is like i will create the separate directory so i'm not going to spend a lot of time in creating the mount points etc etc i leave them here and later on we'll create the directories under the root home in your in your production system you should have a separate mount points uh, or you can it's not mandatory it's not mandatory to have a separate mount points you can create the separate directories in the root that's also fine or you can have separate mount points the choice is yours so 
I'm I'm just going to install it in the root file system. So that's done. We are we I'm going to accept the changes and all of this is done here. So now I'm going to say begin installation. So it has started installing installing and while it is installing, I'm going to set the root password to the password of my choice, which is password. I use the password as password, but in your environment, set it to the long uh, complex and user this user is a temporary user i'm going to delete it at a later point in time i'm not going to use this particular user by default oracle wants me to the reddit wants me to create the user so i'm going to create one user and that's done so the 48 packages are installed it's going to take some time for this particular reddit installation to complete so while this is getting installed what i will do is i will minimize i will pause the video and come back once the installation is completed so give me a minute and time is 132 so another 10 minutes probably so by 142 i should be back as i mentioned i'll be back by i should be back by 142 however i'm back by 139 so the os got installed probably in seven to eight minutes and we are at the stage where it's asked for the reboot so let's reboot the machine and once the machine is rebooted we have to accept the license and then we are going to move to the next step where we are going to install the guest edition so give it a minute for the machine to reboot that's done now we are going to accept the license that's done and we are going to say finish configuration and then it's going to prompt us so this is the user that i'm not going to use so let's not bother about that user so let's go to the root password and what i need to do is i need to actually install the guest editions so first thing is install the guest editions so okay so okay. next next uncheck this next keep this and start using that's all good close this and what i need to do is install the guest edition so click on the devices click on insert guest edition cd image so that's done it will it will appear a disk will appear here so say run the right now the the guest editions are getting installed this is this is very important without this the full screen will not come and also the the shared folder and the clipboard functionality will not work so this is very important so that's why so right now the guest editions is getting installed that is going to take some time so i'll pause and come back once the guest editions are installed as you can see the everything is done press return to close the window so that is good news so let's let me press the return button that's good now if i try to do this it still doesn't work the what we need to do is we need to reboot the machine so first i will do is i will eject this particular disk this is very important otherwise this disk will be there so that's i've done that and then i'm going to press the reboot button so here if i say reboot but what i'll do is like instead of rebooting i'm going to power off because now that we have installed the guest editions we shut down the machine and enable the clipboard and enable the shared folder the the reason why we i'm enabling the shared folder so sister go to the general go to advance enable the shared clipboard so say bidirectional drag and drop is not required shared folder i'm going to give the path of my d drive the reason this is required is because without this i will not be able to copy the software i have downloaded the oracle auto mount d drive i've done that so the shared folder is shared so that's done and now the we are going to boot the machine once again and and then we are going to set the host name set the ips and set the etc host file so disable ipv6 so we are going to do a lot of steps once the machine is turned on so let it let's give it a minute so the machine is still getting loaded give it a minute so that's done i will click root because all of these things needs to be done as root so i'm logged in as root and now you should be able to see that we can make this screen bigger 
as you can see and that only happened because we installed the virtual box guest editions i will keep this aligned organize my name so that's all good the some things that we need to do is the host name so if i the by default it says host name is local host so we did not set the host name while installation we can set the host name while installation however i chose not to do it so let me copy this and paste it and the paste functionality is working because the virtual box guest edition is done so now if i close this and open the terminal once again you should be able to see the host name is changed to db1 and if i say host name then it is db1 next thing that i'll do is i will set the ip addresses so go to the right corner the this choose the enp0 s3 wired settings click on the settings button set connect automatically this is very important the ip needs to come online so connect automatically ipv6 i'm going to disable it and ipv4 from automatic i'm going to change it to manual this is the private network so i'm going to give ip 192.168.0.101 in the subnet 255.255.255.0 that's done i'm going to click on apply so this is done i'm going to close this turn it off turn it on the next i'll repeat the same thing connect automatically ipv6 i'm going to disable it ipv4 i'm going to say manual this is the public ip so it's it's 101 and the subnet mask net mask is 255.255.255.0 apply turn it off turn it on so that's all good and now what i'll do is i will verify the ips if config and you should be able to see i got i got 10 0.101 for node 3 uh, net the private ip and 1.101 for the public ip that's all good the next thing uh, that i'm going to do is i am going to set my etc host file so this open terminal g edit etc host file i'm going to delete whatever is there so what i'll do is i'll change the font so that you can see it clearly font and colors change the font so i'll make it big i like big fonts so that i can see it clearly so that's done and that i'm going to take this whatever is here up to here copy it and paste it okay so that did not get pasted so so first command got pasted the second is not so let me connect to the putty session because we have enabled the ip so this is the node one clear vi etc hosts before entering the before entering let me close the g edit session so close and let me enter and delete this i do not want this because everything is there in this particular etc host so let's take a look at our etc host so cat etc host you can see that node 1 101.102 node 2 1.102 this is public this is private this is virtual and this is a scan everything ends with one is for node one everything ends with two is for the node two so the cat etc host file is done the next part is ipv6 so if you look at the ip addresses right now you should be able to see ipv4 and ipv6 so the, this is the ipv4 ipv6 i we are i'm not using ipv6 communication so i'm going to disable it so my ips looks good so let's do that so what i'll do is i will add this entry in i'll open one more session so that you can see how I, how it looks so vi i think what i copied went so vi that's done let me go to the end and add these three lines that's done twice so i'm going to delete it save it that's done now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say sys ctl minus p so I'm going to reload the settings. That's done. And then if I do if config grep inet, the same command I ran, you see IPv6 addresses are no longer there. This is the virtual net network adapter. We can ignore that. So we got 0 0.101 and 1 1.101. These are the two IPs. This is the public private IP. This is the private IP. So that's good. The IP configuration is done. The next part is firewall. I'm not, as I mentioned, I'm not going to use the firewall in your production environment in you should actually you should actually set the ports rather than setting the is disabling the firewall the next part is creating the group adding two users oracle and grid 
and those these users will be part of the dbi group setting the password and setting the etc sudo also rule. so this all i'm going to do all together so take all of this copy it and clear the screen and just paste it and that's done we have now got two users so id oracle you can see is oracle part of dba group id grid is grid dba so we got two users created so that's good news now we can delete the because now we if you see here if i click if i log off from the root you should be able to see that we have got three users now delete grid delete grid and oracle i no longer need this this is the dummy user that i created so i'm going to delete it user del minus r delete so it will delete the user that's done we deleted the delete user now let me log into the grid user and just i'm going to log in i'm not going to do anything i just logged in so click next next turn off the services click next skip and that's done so start using that's done i will do the same thing with the oracle user before doing that okay so let me log off and i will log in as the oracle user because we are going to clone it if i don't do this then when i clone the machines then that time i have to do it on all the nodes so i'm just logging in one time so that i don't have to do this four times so done next skip start using and that's all done so now i've created the users i've logged in so i already mentioned that some of the packages we need to install so if i try to install the pre-install package if i try to install this particular package this is going to fail so if i try to install this is going to fail it's going to say that there are some missing packages so we are going to do some trick so we are going to say i my my box doesn't have the internet connectivity so if i try to do the ping.google.com you should be able to see that it's not connected to the if i say ping google.com you should see that it's not connected so if i if i try to install the packages using the yum repository from the online it's not going to work so i'm going to create the i'm going to create the local subscription so first thing that i'll do is mount the disk so choose a disk file and i'm choosing the disk file so i'm mounted the disk so the disk is mounted that's good the next part that i will do is i will create the mount point so that's done mount a disk so if i if i go to cd cd rom then you should be able to see the disk is not there because i have not at mounted so now i'm going to mount the disk to this location so that's done the disk is mounted the next thing that i'm going to do is in the disk now okay the disk is mounted i did not show you so if i go back and if i come to this location once again and if i do sorry cd cd rom then you should be able to see my disk is now mounted here you have we got a file called media repo i'm going to copy that file to yum it is repo so i'm going to copy this particular file from here so let me clear the screen from the cd rom media repo to yum it is repo that's done i will go to this particular location if there is any old file so red hat repo i'm going to move it to old i do not need that particular file i will change the permission of this file so that i can modify this particular file so that's done i will by default i will edit that particular file and in that particular file by default these four lines are already there so i don't have to bother i just have to add these three lines so take a copy of this go to the bottom and end it that's done and save it and then i'm going to say yum update and it should be able to see the the local repo this system is not registered with entertainment you can so use subscription manager so this i'm not going to register this particular machine to the red hat so i have successfully created a local repo from the dvd that's done i'm going to install the necessary packages so these are the necessary packages that are required so i'm going to install them so all the packages is getting installed the another package that is also important is this kmod oracle asm so let me install that as well so these packages got installed good and then i'm going to install the kmod oracle asm the kmod oracle asm package is part of the yum uh, uh, is part of the repository m repository that's why i'm using the yum install the kmod 
Oracle ASM is required for the Oracle ASM lib. If I would have not installed the key mode Oracle ASM, the Oracle ASM will lib will not work. And hence it is important that you install this particular package. So right now that is getting installed. So this particular package takes a bit of time for it to install. So give it, uh, I'll pause the video and come back once this particular package is installed. So the KMOD Oracle ASM package got installed. That is the good news. Now we are going to, now we are going to do the next part, such as the Oracle pre-install. This I have already downloaded. You can download it using the curl. So I have already downloaded it. Uh, you need the internet connectivity. If you do not have the internet connectivity to Oracle box, you can download it on your local machine which i have already done so let me go to this particular location so let me clear the screen and if i do ls minus l star dot rpm you can see that i got the oracle database pre-installed however what i also mentioned that this particular package i could not find it in the if i try to install the oracle database pre-installed directly it will fail asking for this particular package so i need this particular package you can see the compat did and also it looks for this so i missed one more package so let me do that as well yum install minus y this so i'm doing that so that's done however even after doing that if i install the pre-install it says compact lab std so what i what i told you before that i could not find this particular package in the red hat package so what i did is i gave you the location from this particular location, this is the yum repository for the Oracle. I have downloaded this particular package, the pre-install, the pre-install package. So this pre-install package. So you can see that this RPM 64, this is the package that I've downloaded it. And this is the package that needs to be installed for the pre-install. So let me do that before. So RPM minus I compact. So that's done. That package got installed. Now we will be able to install the pre-install, which we were getting the failed dependencies. Now the failed dependency will not be there and the pre-install package got installed. Once the pre-install package is installed, you will be able to find that under the ETC. Let me close this. Under the ETC limits, the oracle 19c pre-install compile these particular kernel parameters oracle kernel parameters it has set by default so this is a good news so we do not have to set the parameters manually because the pre-install does it for us which is the good news the next part is at the below limits for oracle and grid users so some parameters it did not set for some reason it is not setting these parameters so i will do that manually for some reason the paste is working twice so i need to be careful it might be my old mouse it might be issue with my putty or system so let me do this and add this particular values here so that's all done so i set the parameters so i'll make it a little beautiful so that's all done okay so i set the parameter soft text size the no file limit for grid user and oracle user so that's all done once all of that is done now we are ready to install the asm lib i have already installed the kmod oracle asm before so we are now going to install the oracle asm lib and oracle asm support so let me show you the packages ls minus l dot rpm i have already shown you from where i downloaded them i gave you the link okay so i'm not in that location And you can see these are the two packages for enterprise linux 7 i gave you the link from where these particular packages are downloaded so let's do that uh, i don't like this it, that's done and then we are going to install the oracle asm support and that's done so now that we got the oracle support installed the next part is oracle asm configure minus i this particular parameter this particular this particular thing says what is the default user so grid is the default user for the asm disks the group 
in my case is dba in my your case it might be o install start oracle asm yes and start the disk yes so that's all good so we have set the the using oracle asm configure minus i we have set this particular entries and then i'm going to enable the asm service and start it so that it loads the asm service on board so i'm going to do this and that's done the next part is creating the directories these are the directories that i'm creating as i mentioned before the this is the database base this is the database home this is the grid home this is the grid base i'm not using the u01 it's your choice the directories doesn't matter naming convention doesn't matter uh you can create your own directories the way you want so i just wanted to show you that it's not mandatory to use u01 etc etc and these are the directory structure that i'm following so i'm going to copy all of this together and i'm going to hit the enter so let me do the cd clear i'm going to hit the enter that's all done and as you can see i got four directories created just now uh 1402 the i am in dbi oracle so this is the grid base this is the database base this is the grid uh, database home this is a grid home the grid home and the grid base is owned by grid dba the database base and database home is owned by the database or oracle dba so the directories are created that's good what i did not do is optionally i mentioned okay that we will do the ntp service for ntp service to work i need to enable the third adapter so let's should we do that okay so i will do that uh okay so what i i did not okay so let me start the ntp service anyway it's going to fail it's not going to get connected so i'm going to do that once i enable the third adapter it's going to work so now i'm going to shut down the machine optionally what i mentioned is in the home oracle dot bash rc we will add the profiles so i'll because i'm the root i can add to this so i'm adding this particular environmental variables in the home oracle bash it helps uh it helps in such a way that i do not have to i do not have to set the environmental variable every time so that doesn't look good uh okay so let me do one thing let me pause the video so whatever i pasted that did not look good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this so i'll say so that's done and i'm going to paste it from here so I'll take this, copy it, and I'm going to say insert. So that now looks good. So that's done. And I'll do the same thing for the grid. However, for the grid, it's ASM, not the, not the, so it's in the node one, it will be plus ASM. When we go to the node two, I will change it to the plus ASM two. So this is the first node, the base image. So I'll leave it as it is so this is the plus asm we do not need to have the unique name and global name for here so that's all good so i set the environmental variable uh, let me review what i've done so if i show you this particular variable so for the grid home i said the oracle home and the base location i gave that particular location and for the oracle user if you see for the oracle user i said the database home and the database base location i said this and i said the SID. I don't have to do this again and again. So I'm setting this particular parameters as shortcut. So that's all done. Once this all things are done, we are now ready to shut down the machines and we are ready to clone the machine. So what I'll do now is all good. So shut down minus H now. So I'm shutting down the machines. Once the machines are shut down, so that's done. I'm going to disconnect the putty session go here so this is my base machine as i mentioned i need the third adapter this third adapter i need only for the only for the ntp service in your environment you don't need the third adapter however i need the for it for the ntp service so that's done now i'm going to make a this is my gold image so i'm not going to touch it so if anything happens wrong then i can always destroy the nodes and recreate the gold image otherwise i have to I have to do a lot of work like installation, configuration, etc, etc. So this image I will not touch. I'm going to clone two images from this. So the first node will call as a DB1. We have to say include all network adapters. Click on next. Say full clone. Say clone. So that's getting cloned. Right now the first machine is getting cloned. The DB1 is getting cloned. So that's done. Then again I'll click on the 
gold image say clone this time i will say db2 the second node and i will choose include all network adapters uncheck this uncheck it by default it's unchecked so i don't have to do anything click on next say full clone and say clone so the second node is getting cloned as of now which is good thing so now we got two nodes i'm going to remove this particular machine so i don't touch this machine so i'm going to say remove only if i say delete all files it's going to get deleted i don't want to do that so i'm going to say remove only so i have a base machine and these are my two nodes i already mentioned that in the first node i don't have to do any changes so now we are we are here we are here so the installation is completed clone nodes from the base machine so that's done and now we are here we need to set the changes to the second machine only so i'm going to change the first thing is we need to change the mac addresses i mentioned change the mac addresses so let's go to the network advanced change the mac address for the internet adapter for the public ip and for the ntp ip that's done so click on ok then i'm going to say start i'm i'm not touching the first node first node is set up in such a way that all the parameters are already there as per the it the ip address the host name everything is okay so this is the mistake i did not eject the disks so let me do that settings storage select on the disk select on this and remove the disk from virtual machine i'll do the same thing for the first node as well because the machine are cloned which means the disks are mounted in the both the machines so that's done i had and now when i start the machine it will not go to the boot menu otherwise it will go to the boot menu so now i am again i have started the machines the mac address i have already changed boot the second machine change the host name change the ip address these are the only things that i'm going to do in the second machine so so the machine is getting loaded give it a minute so the machine is fully turned on let me go inside the machine the machine name the host name for this machine will be the db1.db.com ip addresses will be 101 so i'll show you before so let me connect to the terminal open terminal the host name as you can see is db1.db.com i have config grep inet will show that it is 101 we need to change it to 0 0.102102 and host name to db2.db.com so i'm doing that so that's done if i now let's not let's not close this but machine so let's go again here let's go here change the wired settings click on settings click on ipv4 change this to 2 apply change this to 2 apply turn it off turn it on turn it off turn it on the third adapter is not on by default it will be off so click on wired settings click on the third okay so let me do that so let me say connect and let's say settings connect automatically ipv4 automatic ipv6 disable apply turn it off turn it on and let's see if we got the third ip which will be the the internet facing ip so that's done and you can see the third ip if i now do ping google.com i should be able to get the ping from the google that means i got connected to the internet this is for the ntp so if i if i now check the ntp which we will check later anyway the oracle is going to check the ntp service will be up and running so that's all good so the node 2 we have done everything we change the host name so let me show you that host name got changed open terminal and host name should be db2.db.com that's good now i'm going to shut down the machine the first machine i will now i will turn on the first machine i will turn on the second machine the first okay so did i add the third adapter in the first machine i forgot let's check let's check okay so let me go to the first machine go to the settings go to the network go to the yep it's there so this is good so now i need to do the same thing in the internet connectivity for the third adapter so that's and the both the machines are getting turned on i have cloned the machines i have changed the mac address i changed the host name i changed the ip address of the second node first node we do not have to do anything apart from the fact that i need to turn on the third adapter uh, because that third adapter is required for the ntp service so i need to do that once this is done we are now going to why did i turn on the machines i need to set up the share storage okay so i'm going to turn the second machine off because anyway i need to set the share storage so let me this is all the this every boot that i'm doing i'm wasting your time 
because I could have done all of this together at one go. However, the length of the video becomes longer. I don't like it. I want to keep my videos short so that when you see, you should not get frustrated. It's three hours video. You should not really, uh, you should not think like who will watch a three hours video. So I'm going to do that third. So I'm going to say automatic IPv6 disable, apply, turn it off, turn it on. So that's all done. Then I'm going to shut this machine as well. And now we are going to set the share storage 20 GB for ASM, 4 GB for OCR. So what we need to do is click on the disk, click on the any virtual machine. You can do it on any machine. So let me click on the settings. Click on the storage here. Go to the controller. Click on hard disk controller. Right click on this. Click on the hard disk. Add a disk. So sorry, it's not add. We need to create the disk. So create the disk. Say VDI. Click next. Pick size. This is very important. I mentioned the type you need to change. By default, it says dynamically located. You should change change it to fixed size. If you don't change it to fixed size, you cannot attach to the boost node. So that is important. Click on next. The This is the ASM disk. So I'll give 20 GB. I'll give some pretty name to this. So this is, this is the ASM one, which is of 20 GB. That's good. So this is the first disk. As I create, it's going to allocate that disk now. So you need to have 20 GB space on your machine, on your drive because this is the fixed disk, which means it gets allocated. So that's done. I'm going to create one more disk, the OCR. Again, click on next. Dynamically allocated, no. Fixed size, yes. Click on next, give the name. This one will be ASM2, the 4 GB disk. So I'll give 04 GB and I'll say 4 GB and say create and it's going to allocate 4 GB disk. So that's done. Now I will choose the first disk that's got attached and I will choose the second disk. So let's choose the second disk, say hard disk again, choose the second disk, choose OK. And then I'll close this. I will reopen the virtual box just to make sure that the disks are added, storage is attached, is attached. The disks are at, as of now normal, which means we will not be able to attach it to the second node. So what we need to do is we need to make the disk shareable. So let's go to the file. Let's go to the virtual media manager, click on the, the ASM disk, change it from the normal to shareable, say apply. It will give you this prompt because it's already attached to the first node. We will say release, that's fine. Then that's done. We'll click on the second disk from the normal. We will change it to shareable, say apply. It will give us the same prompt. We'll say release and that's done. The, now, if I go to the settings, if I go to the storage, you will be able to see the disks are now shareable. The disk is shareable, that's good. So now if I go to the second node, go to the settings, go to the storage, the disks are not at attached because we just attached to the node one and then we made it shareable. So now I'm going to click on the controller again, hard disk. And this time, instead of choosing the create, I'm going to say add. I'm going to choose the first disk. So that's done. And I'm going to choose the second disk, which is the 4GB disk. That's done. So 20GB disk, 4GB disk. That's done. Click OK. Close the virtual box just to make sure it's all done. Open it again. Click on the disk. Click on the storage so both the disks are attached. Click on the second machine, click on the settings. Verify that both the disks are attached, the 20 GB disk and 4 GB disk. That's all good. So we are good. The next part that I'm going to do is now that the machine, the disks are shared, I'm going to turn on one of the virtual machine. I can turn on the, both the machines, but I'll just turn on the first machine. The second machine I will turn on once the all the configuration is done. Or otherwise I can just turn on. There's no harm in turning on both the machines. So I have turned on both the machines. So it's going to take me some time. I'll pause the video and come back once the machines are fully turned on. The machines are completely on. Both the machines are completely on. So let me connect to the first node. So this is the first node. I've connected to the first node. Clear the screen. And what I'll do is I will verify that the 20 GB disk and 4 GB disk, I got that disks. So you can see we, I got SDB, which is of 20 GB. It shows 21.5 GB, but it's 20 GB. And it's the dev SDC, which is 4 GB. This will become OCR. This will become the ASM disk. So what I'll do is using the FDisk command, I can run this. This all will do it automatically. So I will, what I'll do is I will show you what options it is. So FDisk, SDB. So the first disk, so I'll say N first is N, then P, 
then one and n w so this is are the options so n then primary p then one then and default default and w so this is done i can so this now if i run the f this command so let me clear the screen now if i run the f this command you sorry not the not this command because it's formatting the disk so if i run the f this command for the disk b that is the partition created which is good the second disk i will do it using the single command so instead of manually doing it i will run this command it's exactly same what i ran the new partition one n n w and enter so that's done that's done now if i run the f this command you should be able to see i got the partition for dev sdc1 the 4gb disk i got the partition for dev sdb1 if i do oracle asm scan disk and list disk the disks are not at created so let me clear this and if i do this you can see okay so so there was okay so something okay so list disk you can see there are no disks so now we are going to from the 20 gb disk we are going to create the asm data disk from the 4 gb disk we are going to create the ocr disk and i'll run all of this command all together so that's done and now i got four disk the two disks the data disk and ocr disk on the second node i don't have to format i don't have to create i do not have to do the i do not have to do all of this let me close this i do not have to do all of this because the disk are shared only thing that i need to do on the second node is scan the disk and list the disk this is the only thing that i need to do on the second node so let me connect to the second node accept it this is the second node and i'll say scan disk list disk and the for some reason it's not able to instantiate it mm, that might be because the oracle asm configure okay so sometimes it happens so let's do that let's find what exactly happened okay that's done and let's start so sometimes it happens so let's now try to scan the disks and unable to instantiate so okay so let me figure that out so the disk did not get directed and that i had to just reboot the machine which i've done and if i do the oracle asm list disk you can see the disk have appeared i just have to reboot the machine for some reason i did not know why sometimes it doesn't work so i just rebooted the machine so that's all good now that the machines the the disks are configured on both the nodes let me log in as a grid user on the first node so and we are going to so instead of logging to the grid user what i'll do is i will say su minus grid and what we need to do is we need to untar this particular software as the grid user so this is the grid home i have downloaded it on my windows machine and i'm going to unzip that so that's right now happening the unzip is happening on the grid one we need to only unzip the software on grid one we do not have to do that and why once the software is unzipped i'm going to that will be under the cd dot rpm you will be able to find that we have got this particular cluster verification utility i'm going to install that particular i'm going to install that particular utility on both the nodes so give it give me a minute as you can see the grid software got unzipped as a root i need to install the cvu so let's go let's log in as the root sudo su minus root so that's good and let me go to this particular location this is where i just unzip the grid ls minus l you can see this particular file i will also transfer this particular file to the node 2 so scp this particular file to maybe temp location uh, on node 2 so that's done i'm going to say yes it's password so that's done the next part that i'm going to do is i'm going to install this particular file and here i'm changing the by default it will look for o install group however since i'm not using the o install i need to set this particular variable to the group that i'm using so let me clear the screen i am under this location here you have this particular rpm i'm setting this particular parameter and installing that that's done i will go to the second node i will go to the temp because i transfer that particular file to the temp 
and what i'll do is i will run the same command and that's done so i've installed the cvu utility on both the nodes now i'm going to exit from the second node so that's good the next part that i need to do is now that i have untarred the software i need to as a grid user i need to run the grid setup.sh so now we are going to log in to the now we are going to log into the server instead of logging in the gui mode i will do the xming so let me log in to the server db1 the first node i'm logging in open accept logging as a grid user password then i'm going to clear i'm going to export the display variable to 192.168.1.6 which is the ip of my local machine 7.0 is the port that i'm using and i'm going to run the grid setup.sh which is in the v19 grid this is the this is the location where we unzipped the grid software so that's it's going to start the grid setup.sh so that's loaded and give me give me a minute So configure Oracle grid infrastructure for a new cluster. Definitely yes. Click on next. Standalone cluster. Yes. Click on next. The scan. So we need to know the scan IPs. So let's go to our cat etc hosts and get the IPs from there. I can also copy it from the document because I created this particular file. However, this is easy. So this is the full name. The cluster name we can give. So this is the scan name. So I'll give. Okay, so for some reason I'm not able to type. So I'll say db scan the cluster. I'll give the db cluster. That's fine. 1521. That's okay. So that's done. Click on next. I'm the I'm not using the AD for this. So some of the checks are going to fail. I will cover maybe, maybe if I have got time, I will cover another video. So we need to choose the second host. So second host is the db2.db.com and the virtual ip for that is db2.vip.db.com you can see it on a screen the virtual ip is db2vip.db.com so that's done the the ssh connectivity as i mentioned i have not set it up i'm going to let oracle set it up so i'll give the password of grid user and i'll say setup so it's going to set up the ssh connectivity right now it's setting up the ssh connectivity for us that's done and then we are going to say click next it's now verifying the nodes everything is okay it's going to check that these particular nodes the passwordless ssh it has only set it up however it's checking it again so give it a minute once that is done it's going to go to the network interface usage screen so i'll pause the video and come back once it goes so 229 by 230 i should be back so it has done the pre-validation and it has chosen this particular ips so it has correctly chosen you can see zero subnet 192.168.0 that it has chosen as the as the private ip uh, and the 1.0 it has chosen as the public ip we need to make sure that the private this is the internet facing ip i'm not going to use it so it says do not use which is perfect and this private ip i'm going to make it asm and private so this one will be used as private as well as for the asm interconnect so that's done now i'm going to say click next it's very verifying the interfaces oracle flex asm for storage definitely yes click on next grid infrastructure management repository no click on next create the asm disk by default it doesn't show us those disks and here when i created those disks i mentioned the path so where is that where is that where is that path so when i created those disks i mentioned okay so not in this document it's in this document so yeah this is the path so i'm going to say change discovery path so what i'll do is i'll make it big so change discovery path and change it to okay for dev it doesn't allow me to dev oracle asm slash what it is disk star disks disks star click on ok the disk the 4 gb disk 20 gb disk this is the ocr disk so we are going to give this name as we are, and it's external because there is only one disk and i'm going to say 
ASM OCR. So that's all done. I have chose the 4GB disk as the OCR because you can see OCR and voting disk. This will be the OCM and OCR and voting disk. So that's done. Click on next. The password. I am lazy. I am giving the same password for both. You can give different password definitely. However, and my password is password. So it's going to fail and I'm going to ignore it. Do not use. I'm going to say do not use. Register. I do not have EM cloud control. So I'm going to uncheck this. The I have created only one group DBA. So I'm going to use the same group across all. It's going to give me warning. I'm going to ignore that warning. So that's done. And then Oracle base by default, we set this particular variable in the environmental variable of the bash RC. So it chose that that's correct. That's fine. The Oracle home, it is already by default, wherever we unzip that becomes the Oracle home. So we don't have to specify the Oracle home and Oracle or inventory. We are fine with this location. Click on next. The root script execution, we are going to say we are going to give the password so that we, we don't have to manually do the, the root scripts manually. We don't have to execute it on node one, node two. There will be four scripts to avoid that. I'm going to give the password. So click on next and prerequisite checks. Now it's going to do the prerequisite checks again. Only checks that is going to fail. There are four checks that it will fail. Resolve.conf entry uh, is going to fail the DIS, NIS name, scan name. So there are, there are there are four entries that it will fail. That is because I do not have the AD integrate integration. When I, I might record another video where I will show you how to integrate the rack with AD. So we will, we should not have any errors. That should be absolutely zero errors when we set up the cluster. I will do that next, maybe in the next video. But for this video, we are going to ignore this particular warning. So I'll pause the video and come back once all the checks are completed. As I mentioned, there will be exactly four checks. Uh, I forgot about that dev SSM. I'm going to ignore that. So these are the four checks that fail. Resolve.conf entry. This, this is all because of the AD integrity, AD integration. I do not have. So these are the same errors that we will get when we create the database. Same error when we install the database home. We are going to ignore these particular warnings. And I will record another video where I should not have any any warnings. So I will show you how the AD integration works. So none of these warnings should be there. And we should have a clean set. But for this, I'm going to ignore all and I'm going to say click next and I'm going to say yes. And it shows all the summary that we chose and I'm going to say install and the grid installation has started. The grid installation is going to take some time. The In my watch, it's 235. So maybe 20 minutes. So I should be back by 245, 255. In between that, it will ask for one prompt where it will say that it needs to run the script as this. Uh, the root user, I'm not going to pause the video because it's just, it's just, I have to click on yes. Uh, so I'm not going to show you how to do that. So the, I'll come back once the grid is set up on both the nodes. So maybe by 245, 255, before 255, I should be back. So I expected to be back by 253. However, it took a longer time. It took almost 30 minutes for this to finish. And Oracle cluster verification entity failed. Everything seems to be have successful except this. And this was ex expected actually because what happened is like if I click on details, then here you should be able to see that only the scan name it will fail. Rest all. Uh, where is it? The scan, 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 scan. Yeah, see scan it failed. DIS. This is editing, and these are the only checks that failed and rest all successful and. We expected that this will fail, so we can ignore it. Your cluster will run fine in production environment. You should make sure that all the checks are successful. And I'll try to record a video. As I said before, I'll try to record a video where none of the checks fails. So now that the grid, we have installed the grid. So yes, say yes, and that's done and close it. And then if I now go as the grid user, so let me close this and launch the putty session su minus grid and ls if i do ps minus ef grep p1 you should be able to see a asm process asm1 process on node 1 and if i do the same thing on node 2 you should be able to see plus asm2 process on node 2 so that's <coughs> that's good so we got we got uh, two processes the asm1 and asm2 running if i do crl c CRS CTL stat res t 
if i do that then you can see that we mo accept this few processes rest all looks online so the 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 cluster is on as of now the cluster is installed we have not at install the database home and we have not installed the created the database which will be the next so what i'll do is i have already mentioned that for some reason it doesn't add the entry in etc or our tab it doesn't add that entry so i'm going to manually add that entry let me go to this and here i mentioned that it doesn't add the entry for some reason so i'm going to man manually add the entry so that's done on node one i'll do the same thing on node two as well I don't know why it paste twice. I need to figure this out. Ah. What am I doing? That's done. So I got the entry in on both the etc or a tab. So that's done. The next part is we are going to now install the oracle home as oracle user so let me log in again to the putty as node one login as the oracle user give the password which is password and clear and then run this particular command run installer so first i need to unzip it i have not at unzipped the software so i'm going to unzip the software so okay so that's not good so let me see if anything is running that's for some reason okay so i'm unzipping the software to this this is my oracle home the database home so i'm unzipping it once the software is unzipped i'm going to run dbi from the oracle home run installer command only on the first nodes so i'm going to do that so let me close all this unwanted putty sessions and wait for the unzip to finish so the unzip has finished uh, and now what i'm going to do as i mentioned the one command that we need to run after the unzip in the software is run installer which is present in the database home so i'm going to copy this software right now we are at the step of installing the oracle home on both the nodes and that again got pasted twice and then unable to verify the graphical display setup so because i did not set the let me clear the screen i need to export export display 192.168.1.67.0 that's done clear i'm going to run the command the run installer command is is going to now the database home we are going to install the database home it's already unzipped on node one we are going to just install it on node one and node two so create and configure this doesn't work it's only works for the single instance so we need to say setup software only so that's done click next it chose the rack automatically that's good so click on next the install type both the nodes yes we are good we are going to install on both the nodes at the same time the initial setup requires okay so what i did not do is ssh connectivity so that one was not set so i'm going to set it up that's why it failed so i'm going to say setup just give it a minute that's done now if i click on next that should now it's doing the validation give it a minute so it has done the checks it has gone to the edition based on which license you have enterprise edition or standard edition 2 the sc2 uh doesn't allow you like it you cannot you cannot have the rag database you will you can install it but you will not be able to create the rag database in 19c so we will choose go with the enterprise edition click on next it has chose the oracle base this is this came from the bash rc so that's good the operating system groups is validating on both the nodes The, I am using the same group for all the all the groups OS DBA OS Open etc. I do not have multiple groups. You can definitely set up different groups as per your security standards. 
automatically run configuration scripts definitely yes otherwise i have to manually run them so i'm going to give the password of root user so that it runs them automatically click on next prerequisite checks is again going to do the prerequisite checks and it's going to fail on that dis scan etc so give it a minute for the prerequisite checks to finish as i mentioned before these are the same checks that it failed when it did the when it did the cluster scan name the the dns services these are not confidentry and dev system and i'm going to ignore all i will definitely record a video where i'm not going to ignore this for now i'm just going to ignore them our cluster is going to run fine so i'm going to click say install and right now the database software is getting installed on both the nodes so i'll pause the video and come back once the database software is installed so the database software is installed successfully i'm going to close it so we have finished we have unzipped the software oracle home to the oracle home location and we have run the run installer to install the database home and now we are going to create the database to create the database as i mentioned before we have only one disk we do not have the second we do not have the what i'll do is i will go to the second node so let me launch the db2 and let me log in as the grid user and enter the password set the environmental variable or env2 plus asm2 so that's done and then i'm going to launch asmca uh, again i forgot export display equals to 192.168.1.67.0 and that's done clear and run asmca and you should be able to see that i have only 4 gb disk that disk is voting disk ocr disk i'm not going to use the same disk for the data so i'll have i'll create the another asm disk however we provisioned the disk but we never created the disk group because the cluster was just set up so now i'm going to create the the disk the disk group from that so give it a minute so the asmca this is the asmca screen so here you can find the disk groups we have only one disk group which is asm ocr this is the disk group which is mounted on both the nodes it's 4 gb disk out of which 3.67 gb is you unused and this is the voting plus ocr disk and i'm not going to use the same disk for the data uh, for the oracle database because probably my database might be bigger than this so i do not want to overload this particular disk so let's create another disk so what we can do is like i can say create and then it gives us this 20 gb disk i can give the name i can create the disk from here or what i can also do is what i'll do is i will launch another session let me log in as a grid user let me set the or env to plus asm2 that's done then i'm going to connect as sys 12 plus as sys asm and and what i'm going to do is instead of instead of creating the disk like this so this is the name of the data dev oracle asm disk asm data so this is i'm going to say create this group asm data one from that disk so that's i'm going to do that so click on here and run that particular command so if if i if if the disk group is created successfully let's give it a minute is i have hit the enter button right now the disk is getting created so the disk group got created if i now cancel and if i refresh this then you should be able to see asm data one and if i show the view status details you can see it is only mounted on node two because i created the disk it's not mounted on node one so what we will do is let me go to the node one so i'll connect to node one and i will connect as a grid user clear and set the environmental variable to asm1 connect to asm instance and let's see if the disk is mounted here so the command for that is select state name from v dollar asm disk group so i'm going to run that and you can see asm data one is not mounted asm ocr is mounted and that same thing we can see from here it's not it's dismounted on node one is mounted and it clearly says mounted one of two so what we are going to do now is i'm going to run the next command alter this group asm data one mount so i'm going to do that once that is done i'm going to 
run this particular once again to verify that it is mounted now it's mounted as well from the dismounted we can see it's mounted so that's good now what i'll do i'll close this and i'll say refresh so right now it says mounted one of two and if i say refresh then it says mounted two of two that's good so now the disk is created so let's now create the database so we are at the stage where we can create our database so let's run the dbca to create the database i'm running the dbca utility and the dbca when we run the dbca we will choose the asm data one by default it will choose for us so give it a minute for the dbca to launch and that's done so the database type create a database we need to create a database so that's done give it a minute for it to choose all of these options so it's doing it's reading the configuration as of now and it's 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 going to automatically say advanced configuration i have not chosen that option because this is a rack so it's going to instead of using the typical configuration it's going to choose the advanced configuration give it a minute so that's done it chose the advanced configuration as you can see and you if you see this in light color then it chose the sm data one as the file location ocr as recovery which i'm not going to use so let's click on next the rack database admin manage general purpose so that's all good click on next the both the nodes i'm going to create a database on both the nodes click on next then it's going to do this checks again and that's done and now we will not create a container database we can we, if you want we can create it there's no harm however we will not create a container database because 19c still allows to go for non-container the, the another tutorial which i have already recorded that tutorial talks about container database that it is done on 21c so in this i'll just do the standalone so oracle aura 19c is my database name seed prefix will remain exactly same you can have a different seed prefix but ideally you should keep the database name and seed prefix similar so that you don't get confused the storage is now looking at the storage i'm, I'm going to close all this i'm going to close all of this oh why did i close that so okay. Hold on, that's fine. So give it a minute. So it automatically chose the ASM data one as the this one. If you want to choose OMF, you can choose. I'm going to uncheck it. It's your choice if you want to go for OMF. Oracle manage files. ASM storage option is selected for data file. However, OMF is not selected. Are you sure? Yes, definitely because I chose that option. And let's wait for it to do further checks. Give it a minute. And it says, okay, so creating password file on this group would fail since it requires compatible ASM. So for some reason, the disk group that got created is not compatible. So let's verify for OCR. Let's see the view status details and not status details. Let's see the attributes. And you can see the ASM compatibility is 19.0, but for, no, I'm not going to close it, cancel and for asm data if i look at the attributes it got created at 11.2 the 11.2 doesn't allow us the password file to be stored in the asm so that's going to fail so it's not going to allow us to create the database so what i'm going to do is i've already logged in here so let's let me let me run this particular query which will show us the asm compatibility which which we have already seen however I'm going to run it once again so that you can see this particular output and you can see the OCR is at 19.0 however ASM data is at 11.2 so what we will do is like we will run this particular command alter data disk group ASM I'll show you the command so for some reason it just always ah oh, I don't like it okay ah this is the third time let's do I think this is a mouse problem so alter this group asm data one set attribute compatible asm 19.0 so I'm going to do that so once it changes the compatibility again I'm going to run the query and now the asm data one is at 19.0 so hopefully this error should go away so I'm going to click ok and click on next so now it's going to do the checks once again so asm storage the same warning omf I'm going to ignore that let's give it a minute and see if that particular warning about the asm data that yeah that warning is gone so that's good so now we are at the fast recovery i'm going to uncheck enable okay so anyway it's unchecked it so i'm not going to set the database in archive log and i'm not going to specify the fast recovery we can do that later so that's fine 
the vault i'm not going to do that the this one sga i'm going to give 2048 based on how much you have you can give pg i'm going to give 1024 rest all i'm going to keep as it is i'm not going to change cluster verification checks automatically sometimes that's yes and em i do not want to configure enterprise manager database express so i'm going to uncheck that i'm lazy so i'm going to give the same password and the password will be password so it will fail the check but in your production environment you we can always change this later so i'm going to leave i'm going to just ignore that create database yes it's we are is going to do all the prerequisite checks again the oracle does checks once again and again so give it a minute so again the same the dev shm single scan and dns these are the same warnings that we saw during the cluster installation same warnings that we saw during the home installation database home and the same warnings while creating the database i'm going to ignore it for now the database is it's fine because i do not have the ad so these warnings we can ignore and i have ignored them and now the database is getting created again the database creation is going to take some time so i'll pause the video and come back when the database is created i said that by four we should be done so this is the last step the database creation might take 10 to 15 minutes so definitely we should be done by four i started this particular video recording around 1 pm i do not know as of now how long this particular video is getting recorded i have no way to identify because there are so many times i paused the video however uh i think i think the entire cluster so if you sit continuously at uh, the installation of os cloning the nodes setting up the nodes installing the cluster installing the database software creating the database that all you can finish so you can have your rack up and running within three hours and the same goes in the production as well so within three hours you should be able to build your rack environment if everything is in your hand uh yeah and let's let's as i as i as you can see the database creation has started i will pause the video and come back once the database is created right now time is 3 33 pm so i should be back by 3 43 3 45 around that time as you can see the database is created uh everything looks good so i'm going to close this and the dbca that's completed we created the database using dbca that's good so that's now we are going to log in as a root user verify our cluster status crs ctl stat res t and the database order 19c that's online on both the nodes we can also what i'll do is like i'll create a connection and before connecting creating the connection we will test the scan so srv ctl config scan this should give us the scan ips so the scan ips are let's let's do this the scan ips are 121 122 and 123 and okay so ipv4 grab ipv4 and these are the three ips the 121 122 and 123 these are the three scan ips i do not know okay so 121 122 and 123 we will take 122 or we can take 123 as well so i'll go to the sql developer this is this will will test that i will say aura 19c the i'm going to use sys password is password the role is sysdba save password the remote i'm not going to give the ip of the host or virtual ip i'm giving the scan ip which is 1.1.12 sorry what is it i forgot 122 so the port is 1521 sid is aura 19c1 i'm testing it just do the test and the test should be successful so give it a minute So for some reason, the okay, let's cancel this. Maybe the two. Oh, sorry, I said two two one. So one two two. So what what I was trying to see. So one two two success. That's done. One two one test. That's done. And one two three test done. I'll use the one two three to connect, and I got connected. And I'm going to run this particular query just to see how our database looks like. So. As you can see, we got Eastern C1, database name is Aura19C, 
the status of the instance is open on both the nodes host name is db1 the instance c1 is on node 1 the instance c2 is on node 2 the database is open at 1546 so that's the startup time so all good we have successfully set up the cluster this was this by the time i started around 110 353 so it took me one two three two sorry two three four so close to three hours less than three hours it took me to set up the cluster this is what we all did we installed the 7.8 reddit we cloned the nodes we set up the shared disk we installed the grid home it created the cluster we installed the database home and we created a database this is this is done and these are the steps that i we did to set up our rack cluster so so many things we did today and this particular setup was done for oracle 19c2 node rack rail 7.8 virtualbox 6.1.30 this particular setup was done on this particular uh, environment i hope you found this particular video useful i found i hope that after watching this particular video you will be able to set up your two node rack cluster i hope you are enjoying the contents that i'm uploading to my channel i hope you will subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so and hit the like button if you like my videos thank you for watching and see you in next video bye bye